Brothers and sisters, today we celebrate the Feast of St. Mary Magdalene, one of my favorite saints personally. She's a patroness also of the Dominican Order. Pope Francis elevated her from a memory in the church, liturgically, to a feast. And uh, this, I think, was a huge move uh, by the Lord himself, inspiring the Pope to make such a change in the liturgy, to draw our attention to this amazing woman, this amazing contemplative soul who was so filled with the love for Christ that she also had to share that with others in a very profound way. Just a few things about St. Mary Magdalene. Um, there's a tradition that the house of Bethany, uh, so Lazarus, Martha and Mary, escaped to the south of France. And that was historically a very proven um, kind of uh, flow of movement of people, you could say, because people escaping persecution in the Holy Land, etc. They, they often went to Gaul, which was Gaul at the time, which is now France. And um, in the south of France, there's, there's a strong tradition of, of, of Mary Magdalene and Lazarus and Martha. Many towns and streets and squares and villages are named after them. Lazarus is known to be the first bishop of Marseille. And um, so Mary Magdalene is said to have retreated to, in the latter part of her life, towards a, a grotto, a kind of cave up on uh, the uh, mountain range, um, which is very beautiful, um, called La Sainte Baume. And uh, there, there is uh, this grotto in this cave, and there's an altar, and there's, there's a chapel in the cave, basically, now. And attached on the side of the cliff is a Dominican priory. Um, the Dominicans have been custodians of this for the last 800 years. Before that, I think there were the Cistercians and Benedictines. But uh, from the very early association of St. Mary Magdalene with the Dominican order, the Pope entrusted the custodians of her cave to, to the order. And there are relics of St. Mary Magdalene there. And also not far away, about 30 minutes away, in a place called saint Maxima, there's a skull of Mary Magdalene uh, in the great basilica of St. Maxima, where also the Dominicans at one point, uh, up to not too long ago in the last century, had uh, a, a huge presence in that basilica. Now, Mary Magdalene, uh, I want to talk about many things. I want to also speak about, actually first, about a blessed Jean-Joseph Lataste, a Dominican blessed, a Dominican priest. He was quite ill. Um, he, he then went to venerate the skull of Mary Magdalene. So he had this unique opportunity to, to kiss the skull of Mary Magdalene. And on kissing that skull, he was totally healed of his illness. And number two, he got a huge light and insight. And what he understood was that that along with the Blessed Virgin Mary, these two women persevered to the end, to the foot of the cross. And he understood that, that, that no matter how big a sinner is, they can be raised to, to become the greatest saints. And Mary Magdalene is a model of this. She, we know that in scripture, she was possessed with many demons and the Lord freed her. We know that um, the tradition says she's the woman who, who was at the feet of Christ in Simon the Pharisee's house, bathing Christ with her tears and washing his feet with her hair. And, and, and Christ is moved by this love, this, 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 this immense love. And he tells Simon that who, who will love more? Is it those who are forgiven less or forgiven more? And so basically Mary Magdalene is because she's forgiven and she experiences the tender mercy of God, Despite all she's done, she, she's able to love even more because she knows she's more deeply forgiven. And it's this mystery I said the other day about how God could turn our weaknesses into our greatest strength. And Mary Magdalene is a perfect example of this, how she becomes the greatest saint because, because of being touched by mercy, touched by, by grace. She becomes uh, one who desires and longs and thirsts for God with all her heart. And we see this in the readings the church assigns to her feast. We, we hear the psalm that my soul thirsts for you, Lord God. And then in the first reading, we see the Song of Songs, that great book from the Bible that speaks about the, the mystical desire of the soul for Christ, for union with, with God, who's our ultimate beloved. And so Mary Magdalene is her weakness becomes an immense hunger and strength for Christ. 
Blessed Charles de Foucault as well. Saint Charles de Foucault was the same. He had a wild, extravagant life, party animal. He, he didn't believe in God. But the moment he believed in God, he said, if God is real, then I have to serve God with everything. So God used his wild weakness and turned it into an extravagant love. So blessed, come back to blessed Jean-Joseph Latas. He said that God got this insight at the foot of a cross that, that, that what survives to the very end is purity. So Mary symbolizes our great purity and also penitence. Mary Magdalene is a virtue of penitence. That if we strive for purity and penitence, in other words, our constant awareness of our need for God's mercy, our constant awareness that we need to turn and turn back to God and God. But if that that sense of constant examination of of, of relying on God's need, God's grace, sorry, if we uh, persevere in these two things, we will become great saints. May the Lord bless you and may he fill you with his peace.